And this is Mr. Riley, and I'll be giving you a demonstration of Module 2 Lab 1 using AWS System Manager. Now, there's going to be about four things we handle. We handle uh, setting up an inventory using the run command, how to use parameter store, and session manager. So, once you get the lab started, I already got mine started. You go ahead and click AWS. and it comes up and it's already has system manager and all that now what I like to do is separate these out and then put them on each side like this okay so I already started the lab I already clicked AWS so let's go jump down to task one now don't forget to do your worksheet with this your uh, lab lab report where you're going to basically at the end of each task do a screenshot paste it in there and tell me what you did okay make sure you put your name and name in the class up on the top of the you know document so we know what's going on okay so we can go to services here and we're going to go to system manager system manager okay and then you have all these right here uh, Explorer, Ops Center, Cloud, CloudWatch Dashboard, Incident, Application Manager, App Config, Parameter Store which we'll talk about shortly, Change Manager, Automation, Maintenance Windows and we'll cover more of this later in the course. This one here we're gonna go ahead and click on Fleet Manager And then you see it created a EC2 for us already, a, a server. And uh, it says manage nodes. And you would see yours in there. And this is the managed instance right here. So what we're going to do is go ahead and check this. And under account management, we go to inventory set up inventory now what this will do is it will inventory everything on that machine all the software any updates and stuff you can do all that so we're going to give it a name called inventory association go ahead and highlight this and copy it over well actually you see it's already done right under targets it says manually specify selected instances we're going to choose that now you can do it different ways. You can do it by in this account. You can do it by tag, whatever. We only have one instance, so it makes it pretty straightforward. Go ahead and check that. And then if you scroll down, you can see how often you can set the schedule. You can do it by minutes, hours, days. If you have stuff that changes often, you probably want to do it every 30 minutes. But And then what's it going to inventory? And you can set up some advanced sync inventory execution logs to an S3 bucket. So you can actually send these logs off to an S3 bucket. Go ahead and set up inventory. Now, this will take a little bit. Not too long, about a minute. So now if we go into here and click on inventory tab, full screen here for a sec you don't see anything it's not quite done yet let me refresh the page okay tags there we go here are all the different software that are loaded on it right now so this would be actually probably a pretty good thing to do a screenshot of for task one So, and then you could check it every so often. And that's a good way to keep on top of what software has been on there, if there's been any changes and stuff like that. So, and here we have an optional. In the next task, you'll install a web application. So, what's it's showing here is that right now, if you look at your inventory, you don't see anything about system base, 
system libraries. There's not a whole bunch on here. The kernel, you don't see any app, uh, Apache web server here. Well, we'll go ahead and check that. If we go to details, show, and this that's the IP address, the public IP address, copy, and then we do paste and go. It won't go anywhere because there's no web server on it. It's basically still closed up. We'll check back that on we'll check on that in a second. Okay. Install custom application. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do the run command now. So over here, you probably have to click these three little lines and find the run command in the left side. It's under node management, run command. And you can actually just run commands on this. It's like running a script or something. So, and what we're going to do is we're going to run, we're going to install an Apache, PHP, software development kit, and a widget in the web page. So you'll see that in a second. So, we're going to go ahead and click Run Command, and then you'll see a pre-configured document for running commands. Well, first click Run Command, and then you'll see the orange Run Command. And these are all pre-configured, right? But, you can actually sort by Document Prefix, Platform Type, Tags. We're going to do it by Owner, like if you created your own, Owned by Me owned by Amazon, public documents, but we're going to do owned by me, and it narrows it down to install dashboard widget. And click that, uh, select it actually, and then if you click on it, it will open up another tab and show you the properties of it. And in here, install dashboard app, it's for Linux or Mac OS, when it was created, the version, the hash type, the contents. This is the actual script that it's going to be doing right here. And so, bin bash, install Apache web server, yum install HTTP, the web, the web uh, service, install PHP, turn on the web, so it runs the uh, system CTL, Enable and start. Install the SDK. Unzip the uh, those files will be stored in the var www.html folder, and then download the files. Okay. So from there, choose to insert manually like we have been. Choose that the only one we have. And if you come down here and look at the AWS command line interface, it actually shows you the command that you would use. So this might be helpful if you want to build your own, write your own scripts. You can copy this, build your own library. Okay. I chose that already. Choose instant manually, manage instance and then the command line interface. I wanted to show you that right there. So let's go ahead and run this now. Run. And this will show here the status. Wait for it to go. We'll back over here. See, it couldn't make it to that website. I'm going to do a refresh here. No, nope, it's not quite ready yet. It doesn't take long. So, success and detailed status success. Only one target. You could send it to multiple targets at one time if you would like. So, let's go back over here to the web page and do a refresh.
I, I still have it on my clipboard, so. And if you go full, you see you have a, you have the toggle, or the, like, speedometer style switch, and then, like, the waterfall type, or XY axis. So, and there's your widget. Okay. Let's go ahead and try the parameter store right now. Oh, so don't forget, like I said, for each task, I want a screenshot and explain what happened, okay? Okay, with the parameter store, we're going to go over here and find parameter store. Let's see. Parameter store under application management. And we're going to create a parameter. And we're going to create this parameter. Now, I'm doing this kind of quick, so make sure you read all this. This displays beta features. And we're going to set the value as true. Now it could be string, it could be string list, secure string, depends on what you need. And we'll we'll address that more later in the course. So that's pretty straightforward. And in your previous courses you use this to store like passwords and endpoints. Create the parameter. Now what's gonna happen is this EC2 will read this and this will add a beta feature. So it added a third one, a bar graph. So this is kind of nice. This is how you could test out beta features. If you like it, good. Put it in the parameter store, let it run. If not, well, test it in the beta store. And then if it's good, then go ahead and incorporate it into your code and make another version. But here, we can test it. Eh, do we like it? Do you run it past the bosses or whatever? And if not, then. Now what you can do is you can actually take this and delete this. Delete parameter. And then let's see what happens when we refresh now. It goes away. So it gives you a chance to test beta features. Okay. That was the optional part. Okay, and don't forget, as I said, do your screenshots. Use Session Manager to access instance. So, in here, we're going to go find Session Manager, and that would be under... Actually, where is that? That is under... Node Management. Session Manager. Okay, and what this does, Session Manager, allows you to forego having a Bastion host or using SSH to secure shell in and use PuTTY or whatever you use. You can just go in here to, to um, System Manager and use and connect that way. It's much more secure. Actually, because you don't have to open additional ports on your machine. So, session manager, start session, we choose the instance, we only have one, and then click on start session. And here we are, we're actually, we started a session. So up here, we can actually type in like ls slash var slash www slash html, and we see all the web files for that website we had. You'll see the application files that were installed from the instance. Now, when you're on step 37 here, do this one at a time. And it tells you what region you're in. You're, this demonstrates how AWS manage, Manager Session Manager can be used to log in to the instance without using the SSH 
In fact, the instance does not have port 22 open in its security group. Okay, and then list the information about the EC2. We'll run this command. And what this does, this actually gives the JSON, or sorry, the parameters and everything about it. So, public IP address, private IP address, what VPC it's in, all the information about that. Okay. So, don't forget to uh, complete your lab report and upload it into the Dropbox and uh, Blackboard. So, this should do it. So, I hope this helps. Have a good day.